Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you find this very informative and helpful to you. I'm gonna be talking about this Power Queen 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. Now, so far this has actually been one of my favorites. I've had it for a few weeks. Just so you guys are aware up front, I like to be totally clear with you guys. Power Queen did send this out to me. It in no way influences my opinion that I give you at the end. If I like it or not, I'm gonna tell you up front that I do like it. I've done a fair amount of testing on it to see how well it performs, and seriously, it is one of my favorite batteries that I've tested so far. I've also got an amper time, which is also very good, and the time USB, which I'll be doing another video on as well. So you guys can check out the videos for those other batteries as well. If you're new to the channel, I do a lot of testing on solar generator equipment. That's one of the main things that I do, as well as other emergency preparedness things. So if that's information that you think you would like, be sure to like and subscribe, and First and foremost, I want to say thank you to my Patreon members. You guys can become Patreon members at patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep, and I'll be bringing special content to my Patreon members only, and so I'll be starting that up very soon. But the real question is, will this battery perform with an inverter, with a charge controller? Will it charge up? Will it discharge? Will it do everything that it says it's going to do and do it well? So we're going to do that in this video, and hopefully it'll help you out to know if this battery is worth it. So let's get right into it. Just right out of the bat, you can get up to a five year warranty on this, which is extremely impressive. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is Life PO4 or L I F E P O4. Now, if you're new to some solar equipment and batteries and such, Life PO4 is considered probably the best because it has the longest amount of cycles. This battery is rated to about 4,000 cycles meaning that for 4,000 days, you could drain it to zero and charge it up to 100%, doing that once per day, that's called one cycle. You could do that for 4,000 days, and after that, you'd be at 80% efficiency. So this is basically a 2,600 watt hour battery. You would have 80% of that available after doing that 4,000 times. So it'd still be very usable, and then you could even add another battery, which would kind of rejuvenate this battery and balance out those cycles. So the bottom line is it's gonna last well over a decade, no problem at all. Now Power Queen has a large variety of batteries and this is their 12 volt series, 200 amp hour plus. It's got a BMS, which is a battery management system already installed in it. It's got the post right here and it's very, very simple and easy to use. Of all the reviews I've seen on this battery, they've all been very positive and that's the same for me as well. I've already done a lot of testing before filming this and I found it to have no issues at all with any of the protections that are generally listed like cold protection, heat protection, overload, all of those things. So it is a safe battery. It's not gonna give you any problems from all the experience that I've had. One of the coolest things that I like about this, besides the price, I think these are usually like seven or $800, which is extremely affordable. So one of the things you might be considering is if you've got a Titan solar generator, which allows you to use different brands of solar batteries or just different batteries. This battery here is $1,395. It's 2000 watt hours. Whereas the Power Queen is 2,560 watt hours. It's Life PO4, this is lithium ion, so 2,000 cycles versus 4,000 cycles, and the Power Queen's almost half the price. And so in that mindset, it's a really, really good deal because you can expand the Titan with a different battery for a very good price. Now, you lose the stackability, which is one of the cool features, and of course, you have to do a little bit of wiring, which is basically get a different cable, attach it to the side, balance the batteries, and all stuff like that. One of the things that I really like is the manual. Uh, usually the manuals are garbage, and this is seriously one of the best manuals that I've seen. It's super straightforward and easy to follow. Right up front here, it says that the charge voltage can go up to 14.4 volts. And the reason that's important is if you're using the Titan Solar Generator, it tops out at 29 volts. In order to use this battery with the Titan, I would need to get a second one, connect the two batteries in series, that way increase the voltage, and then charge both of them to 14.5 volts because that would make them combined 29 volts, which means it's gonna work with the Titan no problem at all because right here it says 14.4 volts plus or minus 0.2. So I know it's totally safe to charge each of these batteries up to 14.5. I can pair it with the Titan and I can easily get five kilowatt hours or 5,000 watt hours of extra battery onto the Titan for somewhere around 14 to $1,600, which is an insanely good deal. The other thing right up front, it tells me is how hard I can discharge it. Now, the way you figure that in watts is you take the voltage, which is, we'll call it 12 or 12.8, whatever you wanna do there, and it's gonna say 
200 amps is the max charge and discharge rate. So we're basically able to look at this and say, well, if I can discharge it at 200 amps and it's a 12.8 volt battery, I can discharge it at about 2,500 to 2,600 watts, and that's within the parameter. It prefers to be discharged at nothing higher than 40 amps. So we just take 12 volts times 40 amps, and that's gonna tell you the recommended wattage for discharge. But it says it's max continuous discharge is 200 amps, which means you could seriously pull some power from this. No problem at all. So if I had two of these together and I'm pulling 2,000 watts, then each battery is going to be draining by 1,000 watts. And so that's going to be a lot easier on the batteries. That's going to keep their life cycles up and make the whole system last longer. Also, it gives me all of the information I need for using the charge controller. I'm going to show you how I set up the solar panels, charge controller, inverter, all of that here in a second. But it's got all of that info right here that I can put into the charge controller. And then as well, even the voltage percentage chart and even how to connect more batteries together. So very, very useful uh, user manual here. I have not seen a useful user manual like that with a lot of other systems. So I wanna go ahead and get this hooked up to the inverter and to the charge controller and show you exactly how you can make your own solar generator very, very easily. All right, before we get into that, I just want you to see here, I've got a Delta Pro system, an MPS 3K, a Titan, a Blue Eddy AC 500 plus a B300S, I've got the Apollo solar generator coming. I've got the EcoFlow Delta Max, the Delta II, the Delta. I've got the Pecrons, I've got the Campbells. I've got so many. This is my third shelf of solar generators. So if you're interested in solar generators, you wanna make sure you subscribe to this channel and check out poweredportablesolar.com because that's where I give all of the kits that I recommend that I personally would use for emergency preparedness. This system right here, literally backs up my entire house and I have multiple videos showing how to do that where I've literally run for days using this system in my house to run everything. Same in my RV, I went on a nine day camping trip with this system, then the same with the Titan and it worked phenomenally. So all of these systems I personally test that way you know which one will work best for your situation. You can email me at info at poweredportablesolar.com and I can help you figure out which system's gonna work best for you. Okay, so here's the deal. I've got a 60 amp charge controller. This is one from High Solus. Very, very high quality. It's an MPPT charge controller. What I've done is I've got MC4 connectors hardwired right here into the solar connection. And then I've got these heavy gauge uh, battery cables wired into the battery section. All I have to do is take my battery cables right here and connect them straight to these posts. And then I'm good to go as far as powering this. So on charge controllers, you wanna power them from the battery first. Now, a lot of people get concerned when working with batteries, you know, understandably so, because you probably went to go jumpstart a car and you saw sparks or something like that. With these 12 volt batteries, they're seriously very unlikely to hurt you. And especially because they don't have any load going through them. And if I can get this cap off right here, because there we go. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is take these posts and I'm gonna take my red wire here try to do this so you can see what I'm doing. Put it right there and put this back on. And the only way you can get a spark is when you touch the red and black or the positive and negative together. So if you're working with a tool like this that has a plastic on here, I literally can't branch a connection between these two, but that's basically how it works. Is you have to have some way of making those two things touch. So I've got that down there, get the black one on. And see, just like that, I touched it. This is already booting up. I'm not getting electrocuted or anything. Uh, I forgot to put on my safety glasses. It's always a good idea to have safety glasses on just to be extra safe. I'm gonna put my caps back on here just to be extra safe. Just like that, I've got 66% of a solar generator system working here. Okay, so I got this changed up right here. We're all good to go. I can see that my current battery voltage is 13.19. So I've got a single, 200 watt solar panel. We're not into the solar peak hours of the day, so I'm not expecting a lot of charge out of this, but all I have to do is connect this up right here. And then in a minute or so, we'll see all of this changing. I can see the panel is already putting out 19.6 volts. It just clicked on and we're about to start getting current, which means we're gonna start getting amps, which means volts times amps equals watts. Right now we're already at 88 watts, going up 110. So now the last step is to connect my inverter and that will basically make an entire solar generator. 
So I've got a 12 volt Renogy 3000 watt inverter. It's a very large inverter. I paid for this out of my own pocket. And to get it connected, all I got to do is take my red here and go to my red post and then my black here and go to my black post. And with that, I can then run things like an air conditioner and stuff like that off of this, which will be running off the battery. And then the battery will be recharging from the solar panel, making this a completely off grid system very easily right here. Go ahead and power this on. Lights turn on, normal for the beep to happen. And now these are live. And now I can even take my solar panel, connect it back up to this. And now this is gonna be charging this battery while this battery is running something off of this. So let's connect an air conditioner. So just to show this works, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to the fan only mode. And now let's turn on the compressor. You hear that kick on. And now we're on ultra high, coldest setting, running it just perfectly fine, straight here off of the power queen. So this is seriously the easiest way to make a DIY system. And really, I could be running this as long as I need to, as long as I have enough solar panels and enough battery capacity. Now this uses between 400 and 500 watts pretty consistently. And all that means is that this may surge up to 800 watts and then go down to 200 watts and it kind of fluctuates with how much power it's using. So let's say this is a 2,500 watt hour battery, which is just slightly more. But let's say I've got 2,500 watt hours in this and this is using 500 watts. Well, watts and watt hours are different. Battery capacity is measured in watt hours. And then watts used over an hour equals watt hours. So to keep this simple, let's say this uses 500 watts to run and I use it for an hour. That means for one hour, it's going to consume 500 watt hours off of this, which means I could run this air conditioner for five hours nonstop off of a 2,500 watt hour capacity. So let's say I'm getting 700 watts from my solar panels and 500 watts is going out from the air conditioner. Well, that's gonna make 200 watts go into the battery. So of the 700 watts coming in from the solar, 500 of that is gonna go to running this and the surplus is gonna go to the battery and that's gonna give 200 watt hours per hour of charge while the sun is out giving that much charge. So obviously if I was putting in 1500 watts of solar, then 500 watts is gonna go to this and 1000 watts is gonna go to the battery, charging it up 1000 watt hours per hour. That's how it all works. Well, that's pretty much it. You can see I'm able to run a heavy load nonstop using the air conditioner, and this system is seriously very, very simple to use. I really like the Power Queens. I'm gonna have links down below that way you can get the best deal on these batteries. The reason I like them is because it actually performs in the way that they say it's going to perform. It actually does what it says they can do. And if you guys have watched any other of my solar generator videos, you know that the majority of the time, the solar generators that I test don't actually do what they say they're going to do as far as like solar input. And so more often than not, I actually don't recommend a solar generator. That's why I have specific ones that I recommend on the website, poweredportablesolar.com. So you can check that out if you're interested in those. If you're interested in batteries, then we're gonna be adding a battery section to the website so that way you know which ones I've actually tested and recommend so that way you're getting the best setup for your off-grid system or DIY solar generator or whatever it is that you're doing. Now, if you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much to my Patreon members. I do this to make sure everyone knows how to be better prepared. I really think everybody should be prepared. Everyone knows that we're seeing more and more rolling blackouts and issues with the grid. The population is only growing, and so our power needs are only growing but our grid is actually shrinking as far as available power. And so having your own power is absolutely vital in today's age, just, just how it is, whether you're into preparedness or not, you need to really have your own power. So you can make your own system like this, or you can buy a pre-made system that has all of this done for you so you don't have to worry about anything. So thank you so much for being here. Check out the Power Queen batteries. There'll be links down below. Be prepared. One of the best ways to be prepared is have a system like this so you can run your fridge, your freezer, your air conditioner, your lights, fans, whatever it is that you wanna run. So thank you again for being here, be prepared. I'll see you guys in the next video.